Uh, just checking. Just checking a couple of things. Today, no, we're going to start that again. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for staying this far in the course. We're up to lesson eight, and today I want to take a little bit of a break from the piano and talk to you about a bit of singing and percussion. Because we don't always have a piano with us. We don't always have a guitar with us. Everywhere in the world we go, we have our hands and our voice. And they're some of your most basic and original instruments as a human. And it's not like, you know, some people sing and some people don't sing. We all have a voice and we all can sing. Maybe some are born naturally better than others, but like anything, with training you will get better. And I just want you to throw that idea out of your mind that, oh, I don't sing. And particularly in a lot of Western cultures, people get really embarrassed and nervous about singing. Unless you're good. You're either really good and you'll sing in front of people, or you won't sing at all. And that's bullshit. Uh, you, if you've got a voice, you can sing. And you should sing, because it's your human right, you know? It should be in the human rights, you know? You've got a voice, sing. You know, and uh, I'm sick of people being really shy about singing, and we should be doing more singing. That's one of my general things as well, is I want uh, us to be purchasing less music and creating it more ourselves in, in all sorts of circumstances. That's one thing I'm about modernity, you know, I love the future. Uh, I'm into aliens and all of that stuff, but uh, one thing we don't do enough anymore is sing with modernity and globalization and uh, the internet, you know? We're always purchasing other people's music. Let's make our own. So. Let me give you this tip. When you're driving in your car, this is one of the best places that you can practice your singing. Because it's your own space, it's your own zone, and I want you to sing, sing just for you. It doesn't have to be for anyone else, even though I'd like you to not ever feel uncomfortable singing in front of other people. The primary thing is that it's for you. Um, and in your car, you, it's a waste of time, you're going somewhere anyway. So whatever you're playing on the radio, on Spotify, sing along with it. Uh, just belt it out, go for it. And the amount of hours you can rack up in your singing practice by simply doing that is huge. It's like, instead of just being like, oh, now I'm gonna sing for an hour, you know, that's an hour gone out of your day you might have done something else with, but you're driving all the time, most people are anyway. Um, so, sing, sing in the car. As well as singing what the words are saying and trying to mimic their melody, for example, let's say, you're listening to Frank Sinatra, Fly, Fly Me to the Moon. Fly me to the moon and let me play out among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. So as well as singing the known melody, I want you to harmonize with it, sing something different to it, because this is great exercise for your musical ear to hear what's in key. You're gonna hit a lot of wrong notes. It's gonna sound funky sometimes, but it's really good practice. So now if I try to do the same thing, but not sing that, that melody that Frank Sinatra sang, so. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. So that was totally different, but it was in key. Um, so that's good practice for my ear to see what works in key with that song and just to exercise finding notes that are in key organically. So, number tip one, number one I want you to take away from today. You're a human, you've got a voice, sing. Two, in the car is one of the best places you can practice singing, do it for you. Three, okay, this I haven't talked about yet. It's about finding your voice. So, you know, we often, it's like, uh, yeah, you either sing really well or you don't sing, but what I think we're missing a lot is softer singing because a lot of people's voice can sound really sweet in a, in when, it, when it's sung softly. Um, my voice sounds better sung soft. I'm not a belter. I don't have a great voice, but I really enjoy singing. And when I'm recording songs, uh, I, I sing up close to the, to the mic because I've realized that up here, because I've got the mic near the camera, up close when I speak and sing softly, that gets the nicest tones from my voice. Uh, so fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. That's how I like to sing. Maybe that works for you too. Maybe you're a belter. Maybe, you, maybe you're an opera singer. You, you don't sound that great soft, but when you really open up, you kick it. So just work out what range your voice works in and uh, what pressure it works in. 
loud or soft or what. Also breathing, I want you to breathe into your diaphragm, to here. Right in here where the ribs meet in the middle. That's where you're going to get your sort of um, pressure and uh, power for longer, longer notes. So, now I want to give you a couple of little exercises for singing. Scales, as well as practicing our scales like we learnt C major, playing in your fingers, you can sing them. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. But I want you to sing them in different sounds of vowels and consonants. So, ti, ta, li, ta, ri, di, ba, ba. You know, pick a couple and, and stick to it. We're going to do K. Ka, ki, ko, ka, ki, ko, ki, ka, ka, ki, ko, ki, ka, ki, ku, ka. T, T, ta, so, la, ba, bla, di, ba, ba, bla, whatever, okay? You pick the combination of vowels and consonants and open your mouth and get everything going. Feel your stomach joining in. Feel your breath coming out. Di, ta, di, da, bi, da, ri, da. Whatever, you know, just have fun with it. It's all, these are just little muscles in your throat. And the more you, you can, uh, feel the exercises isolating, the shape of your mouth, the movement of your tongue. These are the little intonations that will give your voice character and sound. Um, the more you sing, the more comfortable you'll be with it. Same as anything, just do it, do it, do it, do it. So, your scales, up and down, um, in different combinations of sounds. Second exercise I want to give you is called vocal fry. Uh, a cool old singing teacher gave me this one. It was like when you're frying an egg in a, in a saucepan in a fry pan, you know, that has sound of that egg in the oil, and it's like, you can just hold that really long, and then you can sort of um, go down and do that in scales. So if I do it up close to the mic, Vocal fry, and apparently that just like isolates the little muscles in your in your in your voice box and gets them going. So I want you to think about those A couple of exercises for singing. Car scales, vocal fry, find your voice, do it. Every human sings, it's your human right. Okay, next percussion. So everywhere we go, we've got a voice. Everywhere we go, we've got two hands. You know, you can do whatever you want with them. You can build, you can fight, and you can jam. Yeah? And that's a really good one. Probably one of the best ones you can do. Jam. So, um, what are we going to do first? So, oh, clapping. Now, I've got to play softer, although it's going to boost that mic. But with percussion, if you want to get uh, an instrument like this little djembe or whatever, the two things you want to think about percussion are giving it texture. So, any percussion instrument is going to take you a bit of time to get used to. And you've got to think about how much pressure you hit the instrument with and what makes it resonate. So how does it resonate? So this drum resonates through there. If I put it on the ground, it's got no air to breathe. You've got to let your percussion instrument breathe. So, um, so yeah. And then in this, like, in most drums, you have, like, hand drums. You've got a bunch of different textures. But the main two are going to be in the center, the center of your drum hit which is going to be like a lower um, kick drum, and then your edge, which might be like your snare. Okay, so I, re I recommend buying a couple of percussion instruments and just mucking around them with them. It's really fun to have groups of people with percussion and do jams. Drumming circles are really fun, um, and just good exercise for your percussion. And if you see a jam going on along around a fire or something, just get two beer bottles and click them together. Get two rocks together, whatever. One of the best jams I ever had was in the Philippines, uh, up in the north in Sagada. And we just had a whole, I was with a bunch of locals there, um, and we just had a whole lot of empty gin bottles and rocks and Pringles cans. And anyway, we jammed for like 10 hours. It was really fun. <laughs> Whatever you can use, you can make percussion with anything. Go into your kitchen, you've got a whole drum kit in there. Find how it works. Find, find what aspect of that piece of percussion rings, and then just make simple rhythms at first. The other thing I want to explain to you quickly is swing timing. 
This is what makes a lot of patterns really interesting and makes you want to dance with them. So if we have a, a straight beat, this is on time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So swung times are in time, but they're off the straight beat. Yeah, they're not on that one. So, so it might be like, That little higher section, the edge, is off, it's the off beat. And that's the one that gives it the throb. Like in reggae, your piano chords, boom, ba, 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 ba. It's that little off beat. It, it sounds exactly the same if I uh, play it straight, but it'll be off compared to the kick drum. So think about swung patterns as opposed to straight patterns and practice them sometime. If someone's doing the straight one, practice swinging in between the beat. Like, uh, okay, a really classic example, I can give two examples from two different types of music. Dance music, okay, you've got a 4-4 four, four kick drum. Boom, 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 boom. Now it's the offbeat rhythm is the hi-hat. It's, uh, it's off time and that's what gives a lot of the energy to dance music like techno, house, deep house, whatever. You're going to hear in nearly everyone an offbeat hi-hat that's coming in and at a drop somewhere and that's the thing that gives you the energy that makes you start swinging. In reggaeton, uh, this, the, the kicks are often straight in reggaeton even though it's Latin American and they're all swinging their booties to it. It's, uh, it's straight, boom. Boom, boom, the kick drums are straight, but the thing that's given the energy is the offbeat snares. Boom, da, da. It's that offbeat snare. Cat, cat, boom, cat, cat, boom, da, da, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba. That's that reggaeton uh, rhythm. You know, it's the, that's the most uh, recognizable sound of reggaeton, I think, is that offbeat snare. So, practice your percussion with whatever you can, join in with people, sing with people. That's just the little tips I wanted to give you today because this course is an introduction to music as well as the piano and your songs have got to be in time. I really encourage you to sing with them when you're playing the piano and yeah, it's a basic part of our human musicality so I'd encourage you to enjoy it.